G'day there everyone. Just want to do a video on how to make a homemade capacitor or Layman's jar. Now, things you'll need is a plastic bottle. You can use glass. Here's some I made up previously with some glasses. These are some of the first ones I did. Now this glass is really thick and this is really thin. The thin one worked better, so that's what led me to try the plastic bottle, because it's a lot thinner than glass. So yeah, plastic bottle full of water. I'm using hot water, as hot as it comes out of the tap. You'll need some aluminium foil. You'll need a piece of wire that doesn't quite reach the bottom of your jar, but um, it needs to have a bit coming out the top. That it's going to be the positive term of your electrolytic capacitor. Now we're going to start by putting some foil on the bottom of the bottle. The foil's not wide enough to cover it all in one go. Your bottle needs to be very dry on the outside here. I did one where I spilt some water in between the foil and the plastic bottle. The smooth foil is good, but it doesn't need to be super good. Yeah, I spilt some water in between the foil and the bottle, and I no longer have a multimeter that measures induction as a result. I'm not sure what happened there. It turns an induc large inductor or a battery, but I tried to measure the induction and my multimeter no longer does induction. So be careful there, don't get water in between the um, foil and the plastic and try and measure the capacitance or induction because you're only going to hurt your multimeter. Let's we'll wrap this up nice and good. We want enough foil at the top to completely cover the lid when we're done. So that's getting pretty good there. Hold it, we can cover that. We'll grab our tape. And if you want to use salt water, you'll find less variation in your capacitance value. This one, I'm run out of salt, so this one's going to have a bit of a fluctuation when we measure the capacitance off it when I'm done. Just tap that there like that. For now we're just going to do a quick rough one today. Now the lid's going to need a hole in it. No hole in that one. Here's one I prepared earlier. It has a small hole. Just big enough for this wire to fit through very snugly. I'm going to need some help to get that through. Possibly quicker to do this and then strip the wire later. Give me a few frays that are stopping it from going right through. There we go. So we want to pull that wire through. So it hangs down about halfway. We don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to chuck. You can stick any old weight on here. You don't even need a weight really. Doesn't matter if the wire strays away to the side of the jar. I'm just going to chuck this heat sink clamp on there. Just to keep it all straight inside, straightish inside the bottle. And that goes down into the water. This goes on. Now if you have the water full right to the top, it will work better. You will get less corona leakage. But you've got really high risk of squeezing the bottle a bit and a bit of water comes down in between the foil and you pretty much got to throw that foil out. You'll never get it completely dry enough that it's going to work as a capacitor. I haven't worked out exactly what happens when you get water in between the plastic and the foil, but like I said, it did blow out the induction range on my multimeter. So now that's done. All we'll we do is scrunch that foil up as close as we can around the bottle all the way. And you can use tape, lots of tape, to tape it on tighter. Here's one I did earlier. It's all taped up nice and tight. I soldered a ferrite bead onto the wire on the inside of that, but it was a real waste of time. You can just chuck a clamp or something on there. Like I said, even just an open wire tip will work well. Now, that's it. We have a capacitor. This one here is a bit rough, but it'll do the job. So we're going to get our capacitance meter out here. And we're going to switch it onto the nanofarads range. That's 20 nanofarads. 
And we put the red lead on the red wire. It'll help if I have that stripped off. positive terminal, make sure it's not touching the foil there, and the foil, there's a bit hanging off there, is our negative. And hopefully you can see that on the meter. It's still climbing, it might climb for a bit, it will flicker up and down a bit once it reaches its full peak, but we have a capacitor. As you can see, it's charging up quite nicely. Now this is a 2.4 litre bottle with hot water in it. I would expect anywhere up around 5 to 6 nanofarads. That's about what we're getting. Looks like it's steadying off around 6.5 nanofarads. Yep, flickering up and down a little bit there. That flicker will go away if you put really salty water in there. And that's it. Now what's interesting though I found is that when it's hot the capacitance value increases a lot. This one's been sitting on the bench for a week or two but it does have brine in it but it is cold. Now there's a place I can clip that one down here. No, and that's just made a total liar of me. Though you'll notice the value is dropping. Let's just empty that out. Earth that on there. And let's just try that again. No, the salt water's working better. I've got no idea why that is. I tested this one a few days ago and it was only giving me about 3 nanofarads. Now that's not a lot of capacitance. A little capacitor like this has similar sort of value, tiny little green cap. But, what the big difference is, this one's limited to 100 volts. The sky's the limit with these guys. You can till you boil your water, I think, or melt your um, foil off. I don't know what it takes to kill them. But anyway, that is how easy it is to make your own homemade capacitor. Obviously, you could do a bit neater job than what I've done here, but that's about it. It's pretty simple. Thanks for watching.